today I just want to talk about um, how you can take um, the tool like R Markdown and make your life a bit easier as um, someone in academia. Um, kind of a perspective from like from my end, I'm a graduate student, so um, I'll be kind of focusing more on that, I guess. Um, but yeah, I just want to give a really quick video on um, how to just use our markdown in general, okay? So if you have our studio, uh, open that up and you're gonna open up a file here, um, like a new file, um, and you're gonna click on our markdown. You can title it whatever you want to. Um, I'll title it um, introduction, okay? And you wanna keep it as an HTML for now. In later videos, I'll get into other stuff or other outputs that you can, you can use. So it'll generate this document for you. And if you've never used uh, Markdown or any other kind of rich text um, formatting kind of language, uh, this might look a little bit weird or intimidating to you. I just want to uh, go over the, the basics. So um, before we do anything, I'm just going to highlight all of this and I'm just going to delete it. Okay, so it's just going to be like an empty script, um, empty um, notepad script. Okay. And um, all I'm going to do is type out I want to have a paragraph that's called um, that's titled or has a heading for the paragraph called introduction. So we can do that by specifying the title of the of that paragraph with the pound or hashtag symbol. Okay, so that's going to indicate a first level section title or header. Okay, so below that we can just type. Okay, so I can say this is the intro paragraph to my document. Okay, so um, that's great. Um, and why would we do it this way? Well, now we don't have to worry about formatting. Okay, so this is kind of the whole point of it is you can just start typing. And once you get used to the um, very few um, components to writing in, in Markdown, then you'll, you'll start to be able to type out documents really quick. Okay. So, uh, we have this document and we want to see it. Um, you click this knit button here and, um, it will prompt you to, to choose a file name and, and place it to save it. So I'll just name it introduction and you can see it's saved here. And what it's also going to do at the same time is it's going to compile um, the document. So uh, what we should uh, what we should be seeing now. Um, actually, I might just need to refresh this. Yeah, there we go. So we have this output that's been created: introduction.html. So if I open the web browser, we see in the web browser there's a web page now, and it's styled like so. So we have um, our our header title. Notice how there is no actual hashtag or pound symbol there but it's been stylized um, to look like kind of the title of a paragraph, right? So um, if you wanted to have, you know, so imagine this is section one, right? Introduction. If you wanted section 1.1 or like a, a heading underneath that's with, that falls within this heading, um, you just use two um, pound symbols or hashtag symbols. Okay, so um, this is a second level header, okay? Um, and some text in there and I always do, I always do this. Okay. So, uh, instead of using your mouse, which I don't like to do too much, um, and, and coming and clicking stuff all the time in, to, to compile the document whenever you want, you just have to hit control shift K. Okay. And that will automatically start compiling the document and it, it's told me that the output is created, so I will go over to my web browser and hit Control R to refresh, and you can see that it's been added there. Now you can do things like italicize, um, or um, bold, um, different uh, words. You can. It doesn't have to be an individual word if you want it to be, you know. Um, this all all this text here you want to be uh, italicized you can do that as well again this is just like a really quick brief introduction into it 
Um, you can do uh, block quotes. Um, this is a block quote. Okay. Um, and so if I refresh, you can see that I have the italicized paragraph and the bold document uh, word there. Okay. Uh, but if I recompile, so I came back over and hit uh, Control Shift K. Um, we'll go back over to here and refresh. You can see it adds this block quote here. Okay. Cool. If you're coming from Markdown in general, this is nothing new to you. Um, and you're probably asking why use our Markdown? What's different about it? So in vanilla markdown or regular old markdown if I had um, some code that I wanted to show people that was not you can do that it's nice you know I can say uh, a is equal to 1 B is equal to 2 C is equal to a plus B and print C and so the answer should be 3 right um, at least I hope so so if we, com if we compile this, control shift K, so this is the way you would do this in regular old markdown. Um, the output that we get um, is nice. You get to see this code, but the problem is we don't get an answer because this doesn't actually run the code or anything. It just, all it does is show us pretty, some pretty text inside of a nice little box. Okay. So what our markdown does is it allows you to specify chunks of code like this that you can actually run in the document itself okay so um, the only difference here so these are back ticks in case anyone's wondering um, the only difference is in, instead of just having the back ticks there you want to surround the R with uh, squiggly brackets and now you can see it's been kind of highlighted differently and what this means is a live code chunk so I can actually click here um, and it will run everything inside of this chunk. So you see you get the output of number three. I don't need to do that. So now if I uh, compile it again or knit the, uh, the file again um, and come back over to our output, we can see that we get um, this um, output value on top of seeing the code as well. Now let's say you want um, uh, some sort of uh, figure. So um, typically people would bring in an image or something like that um, into their Word document or whatever, but they'd have to create the image somewhere else, um, whether it be Excel, blah, blah, blah. And then you would bring it in and you would have it saved as like a PDF or um, a PNG file or something. And then if you need to make changes, it kind of sucks because you have to go back to whatever software you're using and then make all the changes and then save it and hope that when you bring it into your Word document, it doesn't crash <laughs> crash everything. Um, so what we can do here uh, is we can dynamically look at um, figures that are produced inside of this document. So if we bring up another R code chunk, um, not three, and we want to plot um, the iris data set. So um, sepal length, um, I need to say iris. Usually I would use like um, ggplot2 or whatever, or some sort of tidyverse um, stuff for this, but I don't want people following this to have to, uh, um, have to install any packages they don't want to. So we can see here, uh, I'll make this a little bit bigger. Um, we can see here, I have a plot where the X is going to be the sepal length and the, the Y is gonna be a sepal width and the color of each of these points is going to be determined by the species. So if I click run on that, you can see you get a nice little scatter plot here and you get here um, individual points that are colored. So if I knit this document um, and go back here and I refresh the page, you can see here I've got the code and my figure. Cool. Now, let's say I want a table. Okay. So uh, what we can do here is you could you can literally just print out 
iris um, and it will show this here uh, and if you knit it what will happen is it'll, it'll basically just print to the console and it will look similar to this but just kind of kind of like a table it looks kind of ugly and you get all the data there but uh, we don't necessarily that doesn't look very nice so what we can use is part of the knit our package um, so you can two ways of going through this you can say library knit r or what I like to do is just call right to the package itself and then we can use the cable function inside of knit r and we can specify we want to use the iris data set now uh, I'm just for ease of use for the <laughs> for the purpose of this um, I'm just going to specify that I only want rows 1 to 5 and I also only want columns 1 to 5 okay um, another part something else you can specify so all I did here was comma and then tab and it brings up all the other options for the function and what I'm going to do is say I want to align it um, oops, have a center alignment for all the columns okay so C so now if I knit this and I come back to um, the web browser I refresh you see we get a nice table here okay okay so I think if you have ever used R before or um, or if you've used markdown before I and mean, it's always been kind of separate you can kind of see the benefits of doing this um, in the next set of videos I'm going to be talking about how you can take your notes and turn that quickly into a conference poster which is uh, hopefully something that would be useful to lots of people because uh, I find often you start off by doing a bunch of research and needing to generate you're going to your first conference you need to make a poster and it takes f it takes forever so anyway if you want to learn how to do that um, check out the next video in the playlist see you in the next one